Greetings, dear brothers and sisters, in the holy, mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Once again to Messiah and Messiah alone be all the praise, honor, and glory. And today is the first day of the fourth month of the year 2018. Right, Anna? Yes. Yeah, today and today, dear brothers and sisters, I'm here to help our eight-year-old daughter, Anna. She, the Lord actually gave her a song, so helped her to compose a song regarding the resurrection day, which is today, dear brothers and sisters, according to one of the calendars we celebrated today, dear brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter what calendar we are following. What matters is the garden tomb is empty, dear brothers and sisters. He is risen. He is alive and he is in the midst of us. That's what matters today, dear brothers and sisters. Today is a day to celebrate. Today is not a day to have doctrinal de debates. Today is a day to praise God. Today is a day to celebrate the victory over every single sin. The victory over every every single illness. The victory over death, our final enemy. Because Messiah has won it all for you and me as true born again believer. Dear brothers and sisters, today Anna has a song for us, a resurrection song. The title is He is Alive and Messiah wanted to wanted us to share that. So hope the song blesses each one of us. But before we begin, dear brothers and sisters, I wanted to just mention that in when we see the account of resurrection, it's all across later laid all across the gospels. We see in Matthew chapter 28, the first 10 verses, Matthew or Mark chapter 16, the first eight verses, Luke chapter 24 the first 12 verses and John chapter 20 about the first 18 verses as a, as a matter of fact the first 10 verses are talking about the empty tomb and then Mary Magdalene we see that she waits and then Messiah appears so dear brothers and sisters as we read the account of resurrection we realize that the women were taking all the on the first day of the week so that tells us that Sunday was the resurrection. There is no question of doctrinal debate here. But what we realized, the women went and women, they saw that the stone was rolled away. They came back, they tried to explain the disciples that this is what happened. The disciples, of course, they were puzzled. They didn't know. John and Peter started running. They tried to see and didn't understand what happened. And they came back. But here is the point. Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene lingered there, waited there for a while. She was sad. She was sobbing. She was hurting at that point of time and she waited for a while. And we see after some time what happens. The angels talk to him, talk to her, telling that why are you weeping and so on so forth. And then finally we see Messiah appears. Though he was hardly recognized due to reasons which we see in the book of Isaiah. But Messiah appears and calls Mary Magdalene with her name Mary. And she recognizes. And Mary falls. Mary says, Rabboni, teacher, which means. We see in this account, dear brothers and sisters, that today, dear brothers and sisters, whatever you are, Wherever you are in the valley today, if you had been expecting that today was the rapture day for whatever reason it be. Today you thought Jesus was coming and Messiah was coming and he did not and you are hurting at this point. Linger, hold on there. Mary Magdalene did that. M Messiah will appear, dear brothers and sisters. Whoever, if somebody listening to this, Messiah is alive. He is alive. He is risen. Linger, hold on there, dear brothers and sisters, as Mary Magdalene did. He will appear soon and very soon. And today, before we begin with Anna's song, let's start with the word of prayer. Shall we, Anna? Yes. All right. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We just praise you, Lord, that today you have given us one more time, one more year to celebrate the day of resurrection, the day where every single thing of our lives changed without our understanding something in our inner man changed because Messiah is alive. Messiah was resurrected. We just thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. We just thank you, Lord, that you have given us the hope against every single hope that 
our final enemy death has been defeated. We just thank you, Lord, and we stagger, Father, today as we begin to embrace the incredible, incredible, incredible extremes that you have gone on our behalf that we might live and not only live, have a life in abundance. We thank you, Father, that by your grace and your grace alone, God's riches at Christ's expense, by your grace alone you have called us and not by any merit of our own. We thank you, Father, today that you have allowed your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, to purchase our liberty from the law, to purchase our redemption, our access to you. Father, we thank you today that you have not left us like orphans in this cosmic warfare. You have sent your comforter. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, that he is so diligent to open the scriptures to the diligent. We pray to thee, Father, that if you would please, please increase in each one of us, in our dear fellow brethren, in our dear brothers and sisters, a new appetite, a renewed hunger for you and your word. That we, we each may grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord. But also, Father, we each might be more discerning and more perceptive to what you precisely have for each one of us in the days that remain. We thrill, Father, today as we discover in your word. The exciting demonstrations of your precision and your love. And yet, Father, as we behold the horizon and we sense the urgency of the perilous times we are living in, we do seek discernment, Father, that we might know that what it is you precisely would have for each one of us to do. For we do understand, Father, that the opportunity is not mandated and you have called each one of us to a specific task. Oh, Father, today we pray that if you would, through your Holy Spirit, please make that evidently clear to each one of us, to our dear fellow brethren, to our dear brothers and sisters, that in the days that remain, which is extremely, extremely short, so that we might each be more faithful and fruitful stewards of the opportunities you are presenting us with. Father, today, once again, I bring Anna and myself in your presence and pray, Lord, we just Thank you, Lord, for the song which you have given, Anna, and for about celebrating that you are alive. Today we claim, Lord, as she sings, Lord, we pray, Lord, that please be her strength in her weakness. We claim on Psalm chapter 141, verse 3, and pray, Father, that please do set a guard over our mouths and keep watch over the door of our lips as we convey your message to your appointed people. Lord, please decrease us so that you can increase in Anna and me. So that you be exalted. So that your holy name be praised. So that your will be accomplished during this time. And in the name of our King Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Using our authority of Luke 10, 19, right this moment. We bind every evil of the enemy which is coming at this time. Which is coming at this video. And which is coming at our dear fellow brethren, our dear brothers and sisters. And we pray for the hedge of protection for each one of us. And Father, once again, we pray that may this song which you gave Fana and this message once again be reach to your appointed people to accomplish your mighty will. And please do enlighten all of our hearts and all of our minds of all of our the hearts and minds of our dear fellow brethren, our dear brothers and sisters through your Holy Spirit. So that your will can be accomplished during this time and you be praised. In the name of Messiah Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray all this. Amen. Amen. And amen and amen. All right, you can please go ahead. Then. The garden tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. He has won the victory so we don't have to strive. The garden tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. He has won the victory. Trees, we don't have to strive. He is bringing the kingdom. He is alive. He has bought our freedom so we can thrive. Jesus Christ is alive. He is the king. Jesus Christ is risen. Now to him we sing. Jesus Christ is alive. He is the King. Jesus Christ is risen. Now to him we sing. He is bringing the kingdom. He is alive. He has bought our freedom so we can thrive. Jesus is alive. Praise the Lord. Jesus intercedes. Praise the Lord. 
Amen and amen and amen. Thank you so much, Anna, once again for sharing with us the song which Messiah led you. And we hope, dear brothers and sisters, that the song once again encourages each one of us to realize the fact the garden tomb is empty, dear brothers and sisters. The garden tomb is empty. Death could not hold our Messiah down. There was no force which could stop Messiah. And there is no force anywhere which can stop you today if you are covered by the precious blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you are a true born again believer, no matter what you, whatever you are going through, everything is working for you. A greater weight of eternal glory. Our authority is 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 16 through 18. Dear brothers and sisters today, before we end, let's just take a look at real quick. And what is gospel? What is exactly the gospel? We have so many different forms and doctrines and so many different kind of scriptures floating around about what is gospel. But as a matter of fact, Paul describes for us what exactly is gospel. We hear gospel is the good news. We hear a whole lot of things about what is gospel. But today let's take a look what the, what does the scripture, what the Bible says about gospel. It's the first four verses of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, which tells us that is the gospel. So it's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, first four verses. And dear brothers and sisters, if, if you have not read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, or if you have, it's been a while you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, today we implore you, dear brothers and sisters, please do get back and read it again, guided by the Spirit of God. Not in flesh, but by guided by the Spirit of God, by the author himself, by Holy Spirit himself. This is considered by a lot of good scholars as one of the most important chapters in the Bible. And I believe first this in the book of First Corinthians, this is probably the long, the longest chapter. And it basically deals with our ultimate enemy of mankind, which is death. And today we celebrate that death has been defeated. This piece, this chapter is regarded as the, by many good scholars, as I'm telling that it is the centerpiece of Christianity and climax of Paul's message. So dear brothers and sisters, we implore you once again, if the Lord leads you, if you have time, please go for it. Why not today? Reading it, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, once again, guided by the Spirit of God. There's so much going on in this chapter, but... The gospel is in basically the first four verses. We will be using our reading from our New King James Version. Dear brothers and sisters, once again, you can follow along or please use your own Bible, however the Lord leads you. So it's Paul says, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved. If you hold fast that word which I preached to you, Unless you believed in vain, for I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again, the third day, according to the scriptures. Dear brothers and sisters, before we talk about the gospel in verses 3 and 4, there's one thing Paul is mentioning here, which we won't get into too much detail of talking about it, but Paul says that unless you believed in vain, that's a very strange term. Bible says that if we believe in the Lord and we are saved, if we, Romans chapter 10 talks a whole lot about and we talk about it. Acts chapter 2 talks about that if you call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. And all that is true. All that is true, dear brothers and sisters. But here Paul brings up another aspect that we can believe in vain dear brothers and sisters what does it mean to believe in vain can somebody believe in messiah in vain what does it mean dear brothers and sisters these are crucial questions which needs to be taken to our prayer closet sorted out because messiah's return is imminent we don't want any doubts in our lives dear brothers and sisters our god is a not, not a god of doubts and confusion if we seek him with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength, with all our soul, with all our being, he will answer all our questions if we don't have any preconceived notions. Because dear brothers and sisters, if you had gotten a chance to have a fellowship with us, for our, to join us in our resurrection fellowship yesterday as we were talking about the road to Emmaus, 
that the greatest barrier once again to learning is not the complexity of the topic but to think that I already know it so dear brothers and sisters today is the day to take this believed in believing in vain to your prayer closet and see what Messiah has for you about it so coming back so here it Paul says the gospel is basically first of all Jesus died he did not just disappear dear brothers and sisters the authorities both the Jewish and the Roman made sure that his death was undeniable the authorities outwitted themselves when they took so many precautions to make sure Messiah was dead and remained in the grave and when and they're promoting the story that the body was stolen was an admission that the sepulcher was indeed vacant. In this verse, Paul in verse three, Paul says twice in these three verses, according to the scriptures, which is basically, of course, at that time it was Old Testament we are talking about. Messiah's death and resurrection was not an afterthought, dear brothers and sisters. This was planned before the foundation of the world. And we can see that hidden in the genealogy in Genesis chapter 5. The genealogy of Adam, the first 10 generations. We, a while back, we got, we, the Lord led us to put up a video about the hidden meaning there. That's the gospel hidden in the first 10 generations in Genesis chapter 5. Because this was not, this was planned much before the foundation of the world, dear brothers and sisters. So here the definition of gospel is basically, he died for our sins not just died Jesus Messiah Jesus Christ of Nazareth died for our sins we have to remember that he just did not die and he does not need our sympathy but he died for our sins he was buried and he was raised on the third day and he appeared basically so that's what we see and these are all according to the scriptures dear brothers and sisters if we take anything away from this that's not the gospel it is interesting to see that Paul does not mention any word about the life of Messiah or Messiah's teachings of the Sermon on the Mount or Messiah's miracles, healings, raising people from death. And all those are crucial. All those are important. But those that is not the gospel. Many people die, but only one rose, Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, according to the scriptures, according to the scriptures, dear brothers and sisters. When we say that first Paul says that for I deliver to you first, that first is not in chronological order, it's first is in importance. In order of importance, he says first. And, Mes and Paul uses the title Christ, which is basically the official title of Messiah, or our kinsman redeemer. So according to the scriptures, Messiah died. And there are several scriptures we can look up, dear brothers and sisters, and Isaiah 53 and Psalm 22 is a good starting point to understand that how Messiah's death was predicted hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And he died for our sins, which we see again Paul telling us in Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 32. Dear brothers and sisters, if you're taking a note, we do encourage you to please do take notes of these scriptures. Please do revisit those scriptures let us be active virian let the bride become active virian through the spirit of god and when we become active virian the chances of all this what the enemy is trying to throw at us with all the discouragement with all the fiery darts of doubt denial deception dear brothers and sisters once we use our sword it is written that messiah died for you and me, according to the scriptures, it is written that Romans 8, 31, that God is for me. Then, And who can be against us when we can use that? It is written as Messiah used when, I, when Satan tried to attack. There is no way the enemy is going to prevail. That's why, dear brothers and sisters, it's so very crucial to not just do a superficial reading of the scripture, but to dwell in the scripture and let the spirit of God, let the Holy Spirit work through and accomplish his process so for our sins messiah died it's mentioned in romans chapter 5 verse 8 romans chapter 8 verse 32 galatians chapter 1 verse 4 ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 titus chapter 2 verse 14 and please do we do encourage you to please do revisit those scriptures which tells us that the extremes incredible extremes messiah 
went on our behalf. And in these passages, we see the Greek preposition hyper, which, which, which expresses the idea of Messiah being both our representative and our substitute. He died for, that is hyper in Greek. So, the, so basically the phrase Christ died for our sins is the doctrinal summary of the atonement that Messiah as our substitute Christ died to appease God and meet the demands of the law. How do we know our authority? Romans chapter 3 verses 25 and 26. Romans chapter 5 verses 9 through 19. He Messiah as our ad, advocate. He Affected reconciliation and made us righteous before God. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. First John chapter 2 verses 1 through 2. Messiah as our mediator. He established a new covenant and accepted us as partners. Luke chapter 22 verse 20. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 25 talks about it. And as our savior he grants us eternal life through faith in him and him alone john chapter 3 verse 16. messiah he was buried so we see only paul mentions about the burial when we talk about this gospel it points basically backward to the reality of death and forward to the character of resurrection paul identifies the believer's baptism with christ's burial in romans we see romans chapter 6 verse 4 Colossians chapter 2 verse 12 the same thing resonates it's also a pattern dear brothers and sisters it's basically telling us that something in us must die when we say we are true believers when we become Christians followers of Christ when we are truly born again something in us must must it should die and it must be buried nothing that hasn't died can be resurrected that's why the cherubim guarded the way to the tree of life in Genesis 3, dear brothers and sisters. That's a thought. We'll let you sink in, sink in each one of us, dear brothers and sisters, and let the Spirit of God guide us that something in each one of us must die when we confess that we are believers, truly born again believers of Christ, and it must be buried. So that on that day when he calls each one of us, when Messiah calls, that we can be resurrected. And then Paul says about the resurrection. He rose again. The resurrection. It, here the translations. In our English it fails to. Exploit the differences. In the Greek verb tenses. Between verses 3 and 4. The Greek uses the past tense. To describe a single action in the past. For Messiah's death and burial. But for the verb to, to be raised. The Greek has the perfect tends to indicate an action that occurred in the past but has lasting relevance for the present that we see Paul mentioning about that in the same in this first Corinthians chapter 15 verses 12 13 14 16 17 and 20 and there is also he the, the cross references in second Timothy chapter 2 verse 8 so basically Messiah was raised from the dead and he continues his life in resurrected state as we see Revelation chapter 5 verse 6 mentions. Your brothers and sisters, if the Roman or Jewish authorities could have produced the body of Messiah, all the rumors would have quickly stopped and it all would have ended. But they could not. The, the tomb is empty. And the empty tomb emphasizes that Messiah's resurrection was physical. And it is emphasized in all four Gospels in Matthew chapter 28, Mark 16, Luke 24, and John 20. Your brothers and sisters, after resurrection, after Messiah's resurrection, Messiah's physical body could be touched. As we see John chapter 20, verse 27. He could be recognized, of course, with difficulty. And there's a lot of things going on there, which actually the Lord led us to put a, a video on that. Why? Messiah people could not recognize his own disciples could not recognize Messiah if the Lord leads you you can take a look at it dear brothers and sisters so Messiah could be recognized with difficulty as we see in John chapter 20 and then Messiah also could come and go through locked doors Messiah that is also recorded in John chapter 20 verses 19 and 26 Messiah could Messiah's resurrected body could eat and drink with them I believe whenever after the resurrected body 
of Messiah. When we saw Messiah with his own, he was most of the time, so probably all the time, eating and drinking with them. We see that account in Luke chapter 24, verses 42 and 43. And book of Acts also mentions about it. So Messiah's resurrection body was transformed as we see in first john chapter 3 verse 2 that transformed to transcend time and space and dear brothers and sisters there is another thing going on here it says that paul says that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures dear brothers and sisters it will be in itself a rewarding study to find out where in the old testament it says third day according to the scriptures that messiah rose according to the scriptures on the third day where where in the scripture it could be on and good starting points could be jonah chapter 1 verse 17 psalm chapter 16 verses 8 through 11 perhaps psalm 110 the first verse some good scholars also point to hosea chapter 6 i believe chapter 6 verse 2 so there are so many three-day examples in the scriptures dear brothers and sisters it's good to do a study of the three days the examples of three days in the in the scripture we see the third day of creation having a double blessing which is in genesis chapter genesis chapter 1 verses 9 through 13 we see the akira the akira incident abraham's offering of isaac we see the three-day example there as well hidden subtly between genesis the account of Isaac was missing between Genesis chapter 22 and 24. He's not mentioned there. We see Joseph when he inter interprets those two dreams for the, the baker, the bread and the cup bearer, the wine. One of them dies the third day, the baker and the cup bearer. He was freed on the third day. But then we see the crossing of the Red Sea. That's third day after Passover. Then we, in Numbers 10, 23, we see again that three day example going on when they departed from mount sinai then we see the spies in book of joshua the spies en route from jericho joshua chapter 2 verse 16 we see of course the example of jonah in the great fish jonah chapter 1 verse 17 we see esther fast three days esther chapter 4 verse 16 we see the wedding in cana on the third day john chapter 3 verse 1 of course we see messiah was three days in the tomb all through the gospels we see saul's blindness in damascus also talking about the three days i believe that's acts chapter 9 then we see hosea the book of hosea we see the israel's petition for lord's return in hosea chapter 5 i believe verse 15 through hosea chapter 6 verse 3 so dear brothers and sisters that in itself will be a rewarding study to do if the lord leads you to do a study of the three days but today, dear brothers and sisters, let's remember the gospel that Messiah died according to the scriptures for our sin. He was buried and he is risen. On the third day, he rose again according to the scriptures and today he is alive. And so are we, dear brothers and sisters. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life today let's end with looking at the superlatives of john 3 16. for god the greatest being so the greatest degree loved the greatest affection the world the greatest object of love that he gave the greatest act his only the greatest treasure begotten the greatest relationship son the greatest gift that whoever the greatest company believes the greatest trust in him the greatest object of faith should not perish the greatest deliverance but have the greatest assurance everlasting the greatest promise life the greatest blessing praise god praise god praise god dear brothers and sisters today sin doesn't rule anymore in you and me because messiah has paid it in full tetelestai all our sins past present and future are paid in full and now we are looking for our blessed hope who is about to appear any moment now dear brothers and sisters let's keep up the faith because our faith is indeed about to be signed we hope once again dear brothers and sisters that this song 
blesses and encourages each one of us that the garden tomb is empty and Messiah's return is imminent and upon us. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters. Once again, and we hope that once again, dear brothers and sisters, let's keep praying for each other. Let's not fall for the traps of the enemy. Let's keep fighting the good fight. Let's keep praying for each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you have any prayer requests, please don't hesitate to send email it to us. We will have our email links we will have our email in the description box and also dear brothers and sisters we wanted to let you know we are indeed praying for each and every of our fellow brethren of our dear brothers and sisters who have asked for prayers dear brothers and sisters messiah is working in each one of us sometimes we don't understand sometimes we do but philippians chapter 1 6 tells us that he who has started the good work in each one of us he is not going to abruptly end it he is going to finish it he is going to complete it so let's Wait patiently for our Messiah's return, which is extremely imminent. And let's end with a word of prayer. Shall we, Anna? Yes. All right, you can go ahead, please. Lord Jesus, once again, I thank you for this time and for the promise that we will be with you one day, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for dying for our sins and rising again, Lord. And fill us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit and bless us as we go forth from here, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen and amen. Once again, thank you, dear brothers and sisters, and may God bless each and every one of you. Shalom.